Big data is everywhere, and in recent years, the term has grown in popularity. Let me start again. Big data is everywhere, and in recent years, the term has grown in popularity. To some people, big data is synonymous with Big Brother. To others, they simply know that once they search for dress shoes on Amazon, the next two weeks of their Facebook advertisements are going to be for similar items, because for some reason, your advertisements know that you're planning on getting dressed up for something. What it actually is is large data sets that may be analyzed computationally to reveal trends, patterns, associations, especially relating to human behavior and interactions. If you open up Google and ask about that cozy little Italian restaurant that you've heard so much about, Google will show you times of greatest popularity for that restaurant. Google does this by analyzing the trends of when most people search for that restaurant, and then it tells you、uh, a graph of when the most people go to that restaurant. If you listen to this analytical tool, you might just score a second date with that cute girl because you actually heard what her hobbies are instead of just smiling and nodding for an hour and a half. Well, how you can use big data to score a girlfriend might not be the best topic today. What I'm here to talk about is something that is very near and dear to all of us, and I'm not talking about personalized advertisements, getting better matches on Tinder, or how many calories your Fitbit says that you've burned today. But I want to talk about what makes you, specifically you. Your genome. So, what is your genome? Your genome is your complete list of DNA. It is a list of four letters A, T, G, and C that dictate the color of your hair, the tone of your skin, whether you're right or left-handed, and your susceptibility to inheritable disease, among many other things. This list of、uh, letters, or base pairs, as geneticists like to call them, is three billion base pairs long. We know this because we have sequenced human genomes before, and of these human genomes, we've seen that we share 97.5 percent of them with mice. We know that this, this because we've sequenced mice genomes before as well, as well as the, the genomes of hundreds of other plants and animals. The first time this was accomplished for a human, it was in 2003, and it took 13 years to accomplish. As of 2015, a group in Kansas City did it in just over a day. Not only is the time to sequence the human genome rapidly falling, but the cost is as well. As this information becomes easier, cheaper, and quicker to create, there are several initiatives to give big data scientists the breadth of data that they require to treat, cure, and potentially eradicate disease. The Million Veterans Program and the Precision Medicine Initiative aim to sequence a total of two million Americans. That's the information of two million Americans and what makes them uniquely unique, available for scientists to analyze to figure out what genes do exactly what. My parents always taught me that what you put on the internet will never be deleted, and rightfully so after they saw my MySpace profile. Computers are a paradigm tool for our big data analysis, especially relating to the human genome. In fact, all of the information that we seek to learn from the human genome would not be accomplished without the use of computers, which is exactly why we need to keep our genomes private from these computers. Com- the data that's stored on computers is constantly at risk for sa- hackers and cybercriminals. Currently. We identify patients by a long string of numbers and letters instead of their names to give them a sense of privacy. But this would not be the first time that cybercriminals undid a layer of protection to accomplish a nefarious task. The privacy and protection of our genome is of utmost importance because currently our genes can tell us more than we can even understand about ourselves. Our genes hold the keys to everything from understanding evolution to understanding disease to knowing the foods that we like to eat. Or our genes could be used to pioneer a biological weapon that targeted a particular subset of a population based on a shared genetic characteristic. Could you imagine if a leader of a world superpower were able to target a particular group of people and annihilate them? Could you imagine being handed a piece of paper? That says, if you'll go bald, your susceptibility to over 35 diseases. If you sneeze when you see the sun, and even if you like sweets or not. Well, right now there's a company that does exactly that, just with a swab of your mouth. Knowing your genetic attributes could be great and potentially life-saving. If genetic tests showed that you're at risk for breast cancer, there have been several steps shown that you can take to mitigate this risk for cancer, such as maintaining a healthy weight. 
avoiding drinking alcohol in excess, and regularly exercising. Knowing your genetic attributes could also be devastating. And this is because this information could be shared with insurance companies. In a world where people's lives are torn upside down because they're denied health insurance for a previously existing condition, could transform into a world where we are denied health coverage just for a disease or a cancer that we could just potentially acquire. These negative impacts would not just be felt when applying for insurance, though. Would the American people have elected Ronald Reagan president if we knew that he is susceptible for dementia that would eventually lead to Alzheimer's? Retrospectively, we see that he showed a decline in cognitive function towards the end of his presidency. But what if we had known this beforehand? Would we still have elected him president? What about our 2016 presidential candidates? If they released their genome, and it was tested for various mental disorders such as schizophrenia, narcissism, bipolar disorder, or dementia, would the results affect who we voted for? Would you trust a candidate if their genome was shown to be at risk for bipolar disorder, even if they weren't diagnosed? As we look even further to the future, we see the advent of artificial intelligence and deep learning programs that are starting to understand patterns that are far more complex and intricate than humans could ever hope to understand. As it is the case with doctors becoming exceptionally good at what they do, is when they see dozens and dozens of patients with a certain disease, and then they begin to develop an intuition to diagnosing that disease. That's exactly what artificial intelligence is designed to do. By examining data over and over for any trends that they could find. Not only are these programs now beating world champion chess and Go players, but these programs are now statistically better drivers than humans are. As genetic sequencing and electronic medical records become more per pervasive, it will be common to see genetic information stored alongside clinical data. Like if someone's a smoker or a non-smoker, what region of the country they live in, or even their family heritage. This is done to help potentially identify causes of diseases. Many lung diseases can be passed from generation to generation, but only physically manifest if a person's a smoker or not. So, what if we tied not only the general doctor's questionnaire to our genome, but we began to tie both our activities and behaviors, online and offline, to our genome as well? Well, Associating our internet search history with our genome might be too tedious of a task for a human investigator. Artificial intelligence programs have already teased out genetic variations that lead to patterns of impulsiveness and suicidal thoughts. What is to stop these analyses from expanding to crimes or even radicalization and terrorism? What would we do if we learned of a genetic variation that is linked to terrorism? Would we jail an innocent person? Or would we wait until they commit a crime, knowing that we knew already that they are at risk to become a terrorist? The only way to never cross this bridge is to keep our genomes private from the very computers that we have been using to help understand and better the treatment for hundreds of diseases. Where do we draw the line on keeping our own genomes private? Where is the intersection of bettering humanity and invading one's personal rights. I shared today some things that I believe are very quickly becoming truths. And now I want to dare everyone to not look at one another as data points, but to look at one another as individuals. Any artificial intelligence program would tell you that a chemical engineer has no business studying genomics and they would not be successful if they did. But because someone took a very human chance and put faith in me and my ability to do research, I was able to provide an insight that helped understand a rare disease and may change the way we look at it. I challenge everyone here to put that same human faith in someone else, no matter if they're black, white, or Mexican, gay, straight, or bisexual, Democrat, Republican, or any other factor, because I believe every human deserves someone to put faith not only in their abilities, but them as people, because the future is still to be determined, and you are in control. Thank you.